Shout out to Craig Jarrett for sending me this article right here. Now, if you do not recognize these two right here, well, I'm not sure I don't I'm not sure I really recognize the one on the right, but I definitely would recognize the one on the left. Um, that's DeAndre Arnold. He's the one on the left, and on the right is someone by the name of Caden Bradford. And these two students or two um black boys go to school or went to school in texas and they basically face discrimination in the school because of their hair now if you can see clearly right here both of them are wearing locks which means that is their hair that is hair that like they grew out and they locked it up natural hairstyle but of course in the backward state that is texas which also was another hot spot state for this this virus has officially come out and said that the school board in Texas has decided that they are going to keep that same grooming code that led to these two being suspended. So basically they don't plan to do anything, even with all the controversy that they face, they decided not to budge and they're going to still keep it on the books like as is. So basically what they're saying is, is even like when school gets back in session, like on the physical front, if they want to go after and target black kids for how they wear their hair, they'll still continue to do so. And they don't care what the pushback may be because they did face some pushback, especially for DeAndre Arnold. But let me go ahead and read this article coming from NPR. Despite impassioned pleas from attorneys, a Texas school district is refusing to change its grooming policy that led to the suspension of two black students earlier this year. The students, who are both cousins, Caden Bradford and DeAndre Arnold, I didn't even know they were related, wear their hair in long locks. But Barbers Hill Independent School District, just east of Houston, forbids male students from keeping their hair at a length below the top of a T-shirt collar, below the eyebrows, or below the earlobes. Now, I would like to see all the white male students, what their hair looks like, because I need to know, because a lot of them be wearing their hair. They Listen, have you ever seen when white people wear their hair, some of them look like they just rolled out the bed, like bed head for real? And their hair be long and real all over the place. But nobody says anything to them. You might hear a whisper, but they're not going to check them. Basically, they want their hair to look, you know, cut down low, faded or whatever, whatever. Basically, non-threatening. Because whenever they see black boys with locks, they always associate it with a certain look. And that look has a stereotype behind it. This week, the school board voted unanimously, which means they voted majority, to keep the policy in place. Especially in this moment coming so soon after George Floyd's death, the largest protest in our nation's history, so many different institutions right now are examining systemic racism and implicit bias and looking within themselves, said Brian Klosterboer, an attorney with the ACLU of Texas who represents Bradford. This was an opportunity for the school board to revise and change its policy so that it could be inclusive and affirming of all students regardless of sex and race. But like I said... This is Texas we are talking about here, a very large red state, and in most cases behind in the times for some. Barbers Hill ISD did not respond to a request for comment at the board meeting Monday. An attorney for the school district said the policy had nothing to do with race, which I call bullshit on but was rather about maintaining a standard of excellence in Barber Hill schools. Now listen to that about maintaining the excellence at these schools. What does their hair have to do with their academics? See, they take one look at a black child. This could be a boy or a girl, but we're going to talk about the boys here and automatically assume when they look at their hair that they are associated with something. I've done so many stories about black kids getting disciplined because of their hair. I've done one with a little boy because they had a part. They assumed that he was affiliated with a gang. Mind you, the boy was no probably no older than six. I did one about a girl who got kicked out of school because of her natural hair. They said that it was in the way and it was distracting the learning process. I'm like, if you felt that way, then just put her in the back. And, you know, that way there's no one behind her. But they made a big deal out of it and actually got her out of the school. 
uh, not only just in the school, but in, in the workforce as well. But we're just going to focus more so on the schools. This all leads up with the school to prison pipeline. They may not send them to prison, but the stuff that they do, they probably would want to. But it still is a hindrance because of hair. We can't help the way that our hair grows. Our hair does not grow like yours. Thank God, because let me just leave it at that. But they said that. They said we want the academic excellence. At Barbers Hill. They're like I said, they're basically trying to say that they cannot be they cannot excel because of their hair. That's why a lot of black people have self-hate because of how their hair is. And don't get me started on the black people that try to judge other black people on how they wear their hair as well. That's self. That's another self-hatred of its of of another caliber. It says, but we don't want to comply with what it takes to achieve that. It says, but that argument itself was racist and incredibly problematic. Close to the board told NPR, the school district was essentially saying that the only way to be excellent. See, this person, this person is reading my mind. The only way to be excellent is to fit that white majority stereotype. The student's heritage, too, is excellent, just as the majority culture in the district itself. Only 3% of students in the school district are black compared to the more than 12% statewide. Anyone who met Kata and DeAndre, these students, knows how incredibly excellent they are, Close to Bauer said. They have now sacrificed being away from their friends, being isolated at school to stand up for their constitutional rights and to stand up for their heritage, their family and their culture and for what they believe. And that is excellent. Arnold had complied with the dress code throughout high school, but by keeping his hair up. But in 2019, the school board made the code more stringent. His attorney said requiring the students hair meet the district's length requirement, even if not worn, let down. That would have required Arnold to cut his locks in the process, destroying them. Attorney Kristen, Christina Biller told the board. This also reminds me of that one in New Jersey where they made that boy cut his locks right before that wrestling match. Like what? Let me continue. West Indian cultural traditions specifically prohibit cutting or trimming locks and locks will unravel if they are if they are cut. Said Beeler, who represents Arnold as a staff attorney at the University of Houston Law Center Juvenile and Children's Advocacy Project. School officials told Arnold, a senior who had been in the school district since pre-kindergarten, that he wouldn't be able to go to the senior prom or walk in his high school graduation until he cut his locks. So his mother, Sandy Arnold, withdrew her son from Barbara Hills High School and transferred him to another district for the rest of his senior year. Well, shout out to his mother. She didn't kowtow. Bradford, a rising junior, had also transferred to a district where he can keep his hair the way that it is. After the suspensions came to light, some Texas lawmakers said they would introduce a bill in the next legislative session banning discrimination based on hairstyles. California, Maryland, and Virginia have passed similar laws, Houston Public Media reported. The fact that they have to put bills in place for black people or black kids to wear their hair the way that they feel that they want to wear it, even in its natural state, is absolute bullshit. But that just shows you right here how not how far people think we've come, but we really haven't. When you have to put laws on the books just to wear your natural hair. Some school officials have long been hostile toward locks. In 2018, a white referee forced a black, this is the one I just mentioned, a black high school wrestler in New Jersey to have his locks cut off before a match. After national outrage, the referee was suspended. In 2013, an elementary student in Oklahoma was sent home because her, of her locks after media attention. Her school revised its dress code to remove all references to hair. Notice what all of these have in common. All of these students have locks. It like it's so blatantly obvious they can say as much as they want that it has nothing to do with race. But let's be real. Let's be 100 here. Let's be 100 percent here. It is about race. Most of the people in this establishment who wear locks happen to be black. Let's be real here. Let's be completely honest. The boy's parents sued the district in May, asking the court to overturn the district's grooming policy. In a hearing, U.S. District 
judge George Hanks denied their motion for a temporary restraining order to allow Arnold to attend his graduation, but permitted the lawsuit to proceed. In a hearing scheduled for Wednesday, Bradford's parents will ask Hanks to allow Bradford to return to Barbers Hill High School while the lawsuit moves forward. I wouldn't have asked him to move him back to that high school. I would have kept him right where he got transferred to. If he's doing good and not having any issues at the school that he's at, why not try to move him back? Black students are and have been disproportionately targeted and penalized for violating facially race-neutral grooming policies that are designed to and have the effect of profiling, singling out, and burdening black children for wearing their hair in its natural state. These grooming policies ultimately present black students with an unfair choice, either wear their hair in natural formations and be deprived of adequate educational resources or conform their hair to a predominant Eurocentric hair aesthetics to receive the same education opportunities as their white peers. The complaint says the students were forced, I'm sorry, were faced with the impossible choice of either suppressing their cultural heritage and black identity by cutting their natural hair or forfeiting their right to equal educational and extracurricular opportunities. Close to Bauer says the lawsuit could cost the taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars. We'd been hoping that the district would change its policies now, he said, without waiting for a federal court to tell them and force them to do what's right. That's the worst part about it. It's going to cost the taxpayers money because they want to be some idiots down there in Texas and not just in Texas, but in a lot of places because of hair. And it's not like their hair is unkept or all over the place. Remember, I told you about white people and how they be walking around with their hair all over the place. Look like they just rolled out the bed. I'm not just talking about even in schools. You see it in the workplace, in corporate, how some of them be wearing their hair. I remember when I was in school, when I was in college, we had a professor who was white. And every day we had a when we had a class with him, he his hair was always all over the place. It was always unkept. As a matter of fact, he was unkept from head to toe, even with how he dressed. And I mind you, I went to an HBCU, so he was considered to be the minority there anyway. But he would have got away with it even if he was at a PWI. So they love to always judge us on how we look while some of them look raggedy as fuck. But when you come from a raggedy culture, you will choose to be raggedy and then you will try to throw it onto others. But all it is is they wanted them to cut their locks because they wanted them to appear to be non-threatening. They won't tell you that, but that's really what it was all about. 